All right, I finally got back to testing the one of these little racing cells. Um, right now I've been warming it up and charging it. I got it to 4.22 volts a cell, or the one single cell. Um, got a power supply hooked up. I can always unplug this. This can only put up to 10 amps into the cell and I'm pulling over 600 out of it. Um, right now what I'm working to do is <clears throat> kind of prove like a maximum um, continuous, a maximum 10 second discharge levels. I think the setup I currently have is somewhere in between. Basically the biggest thing I did was, first off I used a heat gun a little bit, heated up the uh, copper bus bar. It's got set up on each end and then a little bit through the middle of the path to get some temperature into it. Plus I've done a couple um, tests on it with high current, which brings the temperature up as well. <clears throat> um, what it is, I put my shunts in a cooler here with some cold water. Um, <clears throat> now the shunts have the higher resistance in the circuit, but unfortunately there is gonna be some heat that's gonna build up in these wires. The biggest reason I put the shunts in the cooler to keep them cool is um, <clears throat> to stop the current from dropping due to the increase in resistance in my load, which is essentially a bunch of shunts in series to give me the resistance I needed. So I think the biggest thing is I added a big chunk of um, four gauge, I believe this is wire, <clears throat> and I was doing my last test with six gauge. Um, yeah, 19.2 mil. So four gauge, um, I think that should be good. And I've kind of done some tests. So I think what I'll do now is I'll do the first test. I'm trying to build up some heat in the first cell. We'll unplug this just so that it doesn't skew our readings, which would only honestly be 10 amps. And we will get going with our test here. So we'll start recording that. So right now I should be able to just take this and put it right on there. So we're doing 700 amps, 600 and something amps. My wire is getting hot. I had to let go because my connection here is getting pretty warm. So I got a welding glove on so I don't burn my hand on this. Um, 39 degrees. I'm trying to get this, keep the cell up around 39, 40 degrees for these tests. Um, got it about 4.2 volts again. I'll clear data. And we'll connect, we'll unplug this so it's not charging while we do this. This is an accurate test. Go to connect, it should start showing data. And we should be able to put this on there. So now we have 660 amps flowing. Um, we've got to keep an eye on our cell temperature. We're pulling it down pretty good, three point something volts. It's holding it pretty good. Holding it pretty good. We're gaining temperature. I can feel in my fingers. 580 amps still. 40. I'm going to stop in a couple seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. That's enough. So that connector is pretty hot. The cell probably gained some temperature. It might get up to 50 degrees. Nothing like doing this live so that it um, makes it look like every possible computer problem can happen, well happen, so open. Once you open it in a calculation, calc spreadsheet, it'll actually, um, should work properly. So just gotta find the right one, 40 degrees. Yeah, cell gained, so it probably hit around 60 something degrees. So I'm gonna let that cool, I'm not gonna do any more. Um, it's at rebounded to 3.7, so basically, I dropped half the power out of the cell. That's probably the most I would want to, I'm gonna charge it now for a bit. Um, that's probably the most I would want to, and I'll actually bring the current down a bit on charging. But not only is the voltage dropping during that test, the temperature in these wires is going up. Like these are, these wires are like almost too hot to hold right now. Like that one little cell made this huge, this is like seven or eight. No, it's like 10 feet of this cable because it goes from up there and down and back. And then all these shunts I put in this water here. The water's still cold, but you know, I'm trying to keep it as consistent as I can. If I could have these whole cables cooled as well, it would help or run thicker cable. But unfortunately these cables are part of the calibration to get the, to get the resistance I want. Um, I have a few minutes while the cell charges back up. It's still at 50 degrees, but it's been cooling down. Um, the video, I think it showed it hit 63 degrees or something like that. 
you can see here it peaked 730 roughly amps and I can look in the log here and then it it dropped a little bit at first when the and you can see what probably happened this little drop and then it started to come up a little bit on voltage right here the second trace column is voltage um, I don't know why they don't show oh I might have to do some math and all that yeah yeah so the voltage is times a hundred or divide by a hundred so like it dropped to three point two or 3.1 volts here and then regained a bit of voltage and then held pretty level but the current was dropping the reason the current was dropping was not the voltage in the battery i was incorrect on that it's actually the heat in these wires which whatever so because that right there i don't even really need to prove much more than that um that was a discharge from full to half and the cells did exactly what i need them to do um <clears throat> Started with them at 40 degrees or 39 degrees Celsius. It was stabilized pretty good there. I had been heating it from doing a couple tests like this, but also using the heat gun to get it up to temperature. And everything seems good. I'll try and get all that sorted out before the temperature of the cell drops too much because it's only, you know, um, 18 degrees in the shop or something, maybe 16 degrees in the shop. Been running a couple of heat dishes to warm it up in here all day, basically. Um, so the cell itself is cooling off pretty fast. I have an aluminum heat sink on each side and I did that partially because um, I do need to cool it once it's up to temperature, but I needed the thermal mass as well. So got it up to temperature and yeah, they're, they're kind of insulated with some duct tape is the smartest way to do it because I didn't want to have direct metal against the foil pouch because it could have end up shorting on one of the ends or something. So I tried to do something somewhat safe that would still pull some heat out. Um, this is probably the most extreme um, test you could do on a single cell because it doesn't have proper cooling and once you built the pack properly you'd use the right things between each cell that touch each other and you would cool the ends um, these these copper bus bars do have a good thermal mass so they won't allow it to get too hot but at the same time in the real world those would probably start at 30 degrees celsius the cells are might preheat that's hard to say that's a really tricky thing because we're going to cool the ends, like I said in the previous video. Anyways, I'll quit rambling and I'll go try and get that set up. All right, I decided I'm going to use a stopwatch app on the computer. I have the Arduino file, but I have to look at how to add um, um, time to the bottom scale. I think it's already there. I just thought I've got to understand the increments and when it, when it spits that out. So I'm going to do it this way. I got my cell at the temperature I want. Um, a tiny bit charged up more than I should have it, but I'll be bringing that down soon enough um, and um, Go like that for now. So I'll have to reset these meters Nothing like this, you know Nice fancy meter that won't let you leave it turned on the whole time I'll have to do a little research if there's a way I can bypass that auto shut off thing um, nonetheless I think I'm ready, so I'll grab my wire here. <clears throat> sure I'm ready. Um, okay, so the first step, I'm just gonna turn the stopwatch on. We'll have it playing. And then we will <clears throat> hit this right here. 736 amps. I'm gonna watch temperature and voltages. 620 amps, 610 amps, still pulling some pretty good current. I hear something making a bit of noise. Oh, you can see right here it puffed. Um, eh, maybe it just expanded a bit. Oh no, it expanded on both sides. It's definitely, it's got some heat to it. <clears throat> um, it's down to 3.7 volts. That's more or less, like the best acid test I can give it in a short amount of time. Um, <clears throat> I was gonna open the garage door, but I have a feeling it's not gonna explode. So I think what it's kind of settled. It's gonna probably come up to 60 something degrees again. This is basically the limit of what I would do out of this cell. So if we, um, we can always scroll back up here and look, and we can see like we did a test for quite a while and this will all be saved in a video. It started at 736 amps and it kept pulling current. You know, it's still at 3.1 volts, still pulling 540 amps and it re 
Just a quick little update. It has climbed all the way to 66 degrees Celsius. I would say I wouldn't want to, what I would actually do in a vehicle is I'd do thermal cutbacks starting at probably 50 degrees Celsius. As soon as you see 50, and that's with a thermal couple in the right spot. These thermal couples might not be, it might not even be good enough. So, you know, even then, depending on how you're gonna push them, if your thermal couple can't read the uh, temperature fast enough, so to speak, if it can't see how hot it is inside the cell, you're gonna need to start your thermal cutbacks a little earlier, earlier, maybe at like 45 or 48 degrees Celsius, but, and it depends on how much current you're planning to push out of them. All right, uh, just to wrap things up, <clears throat> um, my last test went pretty well. You can see it peaked 736 amps here at the start. It fell a little bit quicker at the start. Um, you can see the voltage fell a bit and then it kind of leveled off. Um, at the same time, the current kept going down but the voltage is staying flat and the reason for that is these wires and the shunts in the cooler and the water there were all getting heated up. So basically, the water was not was keeping that part cool but these wires, they're four gauge so they're they're getting warm like I, they're probably like 70 degrees when it's done the test and my connection where I held it with my hand is getting warm. The cell itself was warming up. It hit about 65 degrees at the end of that test. It takes a couple, you know, a few seconds for that to show up on the, on the temperature gauge. Nonetheless, that actually held its voltage really well. So it would probably do that to the end. And the cell is not actually damaged like I was worried. I, I got a little bit worried because I heard this, the tinfoil um, casing of the, the cell actually popping a bit. So what it is, is it actually just probably... It may have micro gas a bit inside, but I highly doubt it. I think all that it was is whatever is in there, you know, your electrolyte, you maybe a tiny bit of gas is whatever, expanded a, a wee bit and not expanded out. It could just be the fact that the aluminum foil itself got warm and expanded and had nowhere to go. Once that cell's potted into a proper enclosure, and I mean, like it's put in an enclosure, everything's designed properly, it's full of potting. That potting material will hold things in place, but also... Um, when you design your cell um, assembly correctly, you'll have the right stuff between the cells to keep a certain amount of um, pressure on them. Nonetheless, that potting will also help pull heat from every spot. And then on each end, I'm going to cool the tab. So I think that'll be okay. Um, <clears throat> that's a pretty good run. And we'll be able to look at the video and um, talk about how long that test lasted for. I'm, I know that's longer than I need. Hoping to run, you know, quarter miles in much less time than I was testing there. You can also see at the end, um, you know, it's still well over 500 amps. Like we're probably 550 amps. So we can scroll down here and look at the end of the run here um, or end of the test. Um, the very end, yeah, 3.11 volts at 540 amps after um, however long that was. We'll be adding that part to the video here in a minute, but um, you know, <clears throat> that's more than I expect to pull out of one of these cells, I think. Um, and that, like one thing to explain too is the um, start of the run, you're not pulling that much current out of the battery. Like, um, you know, even if you're, you're a drag car or whatever it is you're building can pull um, 1500 amps out of the battery pack at the end of the quarter mile. It's actually only pulling like, you know, 50 or 60 amps at the start when you launch the car. Um, as soon as you get moving and the RPM starts coming up, that um, amperage, the battery amperage comes up basically on a, on a straight line, um, on a 45 degree angle, whatever you want to call it, but it comes up until it hits the peak power. So um, the reason being is your power goes up as you increase the motor speed and it's well, the motor works as a buck converter. So that's something to think about as you start the run, you're not pulling that much power to the battery. So really you're actually pulling, um, you know, maybe 50 amps at the start of the run and 1500 amps at the end of the run. So I would say for the first eighth mile, you're not actually pushing the battery hard. And then the second eighth mile, like the second half of the quarter mile, you're starting to push the battery hard, but luckily you're up to some speed by that point. So that part goes by much quicker. So you're probably pulling around peak current probably for around in my car i'm hoping it may be around three seconds of peak current so this should work out really well yeah so it looks like the test is about 23 seconds or something like that so you can see this 
scale on the bottom is actually seconds times 10. So basically 23 at the end point, 23.5 at the end point, and about, you know, 10 at the start. So yeah, it should be about 22 seconds long. I'll try and do another test where I go right to where the voltage falls off because you can see the voltage is actually pretty level here. Um, my cursor in a screenshot isn't very good, so we'll just get rid of that. <clears throat> um, there we are. You can see the voltage here at the end. It was starting to come down, but it still had, like, it was pretty damn flat for that whole test. A little over, um, you know, what was that? 3 .3 3.2, 3.15 5 volts. You know, towards the end is at, yeah, still at 3.11 volts. So <clears throat> I would say I can still probably do um, 10 to 15 seconds longer testing, but I honestly don't need to test that. I honestly don't need that. It's kind of a neat data to have. So um, what is the math workout to? These are rated, they're 5.1 amp hour cells and they're rated at 100 C continuous. So yeah, so they're 60 C, uh, sorry, they're 100 C rated continuous cells. I'll do 150 bursts. I've already proven over 150 C burst. So 60 times 60, 60 minutes with 60 seconds is 3,600. And then divide by 100 is 36 seconds. So yeah, I've proven 22 seconds. And you can see from the chart, it was good for another you know, 10 to 15 seconds. So that's about right. We're in the ballpark. And I don't plan to use the rest of that. Um, you know, my runs are going to be below 10 seconds. I'm sure of that. My goal is to be much faster than that so i don't think we'll have any problems with what i'm building in fact i'm going to have more energy on the car than i need for a quarter mile run as well so should be good